But yeah, uh, clearly we're going to be doing a bubble sort today. Um, and just to uh, get it out of the way, uh, right at the front, this is clearly Python, but you don't need to know Python at all to be able to, to, be able to follow along with this because we are going to be going pretty in depth on the logic. And of course, once you have a grasp on the logic, you'll be able to transfer and actually translate that logic into uh, your own language of choice, right? Um, so yeah, we'll just talk about this stuff in Python and um, just to kick it off, obviously up here, we've got our bubble sort function that we're gonna walk through line by line in detail. And uh, I've got some sort of uh, stuff down here to help me print out um, some, uh, you know, some arrays and stuff like that so we, we can actually sort of see the output and stuff like that and see what's going on here. Uh, we can actually clear this up for a second. But yeah, so this is just to help us, um, you know, actually see if this thing is working or not. Um, but yeah, we can, um, we'll actually just sort of jump right into it now because I'm sure you're here wanting to see how bubble sort actually works and um, actually the kind of idea behind bubble sort and how it actually sorts an array. Um, so we'll talk about that first and then at the end, we can maybe, um, we can maybe talk about um, why you might actually not want to use this sort and sort of like why we actually learn it in the first place. We'll talk about all that stuff towards the end of the video, hopefully, if I remember. But yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. The uh, idea behind bubble sort is uh, clearly I want to sort this array of numbers in increasing order, one, two, three, four, five. But um, in order to do that, we have to kind of have an idea of, uh, or I guess an approach of how we want to do this, right? For bubble sort, because there's a few, there's a there's a few other naive sorting algorithms, like right, like one of them being insertion sort, another one being um, uh, selection sort. So there's a few different naive, slower um, sorting algorithms like this, and they all have different approaches. The approach for bubble sort is basically swapping elements until we don't have to swap anymore. That's the idea. I want to swap elements in the array side by side until there's nothing else to swap. And so what that's going to kind of look like is something like this, just as a high level overview. If I'm iterating through this array with our friendly I pointer, if we're iterating through and I notice, hey, this element and the one in front of me, these are actually out of order. Uh, what you end up doing is you'll just swap them, right? We know they're out of order, so why not just take the time right now to go ahead and put them in order? We'll swap these two, right? Cool. Sounds perfectly reasonable to me, right? So we'll move on to the next iteration. I look at this element, four, and the one in the, in the index to the right, that's two, index two, that is, but element three, and I notice, hey, these are out of order as well. Let's go ahead and swap these. And so you keep doing that, and you go down the line, always iterating through and then checking to see if you need to swap stuff. Of course, the four and one are out of order, so we'll swap those. And the uh, four comes over here, and then you move on. And then we notice, hey, four and five, these are actually you know, where they're supposed to be. These, these aren't out of order, so these are fine. And then we'll want to exit. You don't wanna, we don't really care about this last index because there's nothing after it, right? We know we've already compared these two. So I don't care about the last index. We'll, that'll, that'll come up later when we talk about this minus one that's right here. But, um, so if you notice, now that we're done going through this array, if you notice, this still isn't sorted, right? It's not sorted. I want one, two, three, four, five, but I've got two, three, one, four, five, right? So, the, the reason this ends up being inefficient, the reason bubble sort ends up being inefficient is because I actually need to do what I just did as many times as necessary to get this array sorted. So we have to go back at the very beginning and then check, do I need to swap these two? No. Do I need to swap these two? Yes. And so you can see, eventually things will end up being sorted. This one is sort of making its way towards the beginning where it needs to go and uh, everything else kind of will stay in place, right? So if I were to do one more pass through this array, I would finally be able to get my uh, sorted order, 
by having one, two, three, four, five. So I did that a few times, right? The worst case scenario is I actually do that, or excuse me, I actually make a pass through the array to do all of this n amount of times, n being like the actual size of the array. That's the worst case. So all in all, I'm doing n number of things n times. That gives us a time complexity of O of n squared. We could talk about that a little bit later if you're not too familiar with time complexity and stuff like that, or you could just ignore it for now if you want. But um, that's, that's why this ends up being a little bit more inefficient and why we might not want to use this sorting algorithm. But yeah, that's sort of the concept of bubble sort, right? Now let's actually uh, walk through the code and we can look at a few different variations of how you might want to write this. Um, but this is the first one right here that we'll look at. And uh, yeah, we'll just go line by line and kind of see what happens. Cool, so now, now I've got my array up at the top. This is the original array that we're starting with. And then um, this is kind of, this will be our sort of working area so we can see what's going on at each step on the way to uh, the final answer. But um, for this code right here, we have a while true. We're gonna start looking line by line now and figuring this out. So while trues are maybe, could, like you can consider this to be a little bit dangerous because you know clearly this indicates like, well, I might loop forever. So you have to be kind of smart whenever using these while true loops. But um, for us, if we use a, a little bit of logic and thinking, we realize that um, we will have an exit condition. We will be able to get out of this while loop. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But now I have this uh, swapped equals false line right here. This line will run on every single iteration. So swapped is constantly going to be reset back to false in case it ever becomes true. So we'll keep going and we'll talk about that uh, or we'll, we'll wrap it up a little bit later. Now I have this uh, for loop. This is the for loop that's actually going through the array one by one. Like earlier, how I uh, moved this i pointer variable um, all the way through the array. This is what that for loop is. We're moving this i variable through the whole array, essentially, through the length of the array. And we start at zero. And so for those that aren't totally familiar with Python, I'll go ahead and explain this now. It's a little bit confusing, but this will be good uh, recap even if you do um, know Python and, for, and are familiar with the range function. But the range function right here, if you notice we're calling it, we are calling this range function. What this does is actually gives us a sort of uh, list of numbers to iterate through. So let's pretend for a second that I passed in range five here. Python would actually give us zero, one, two, three, four to iterate through. And we passed in a five, right? We were telling Python, hey, I want five numbers to iterate through. And by default, it'll start at zero and then go all the way up. And it will, excuse me, it'll, it'll, it'll give you that many elements essentially. So five elements, right? But if I start at zero, the fifth number is actually just gonna be four, right? So we can kind of think of this as being um, uh, like uh, non-inclusive, right? The, it, it won't include the five right here, not inclusive. So um, with that five, if we actually go back to what we had before, length of the array, this array that we have right here is actually five. But if you notice too, the indices that I've kind of uh, grayed out over here, I have zero, one, two, three, four. So if I were to just pass in the length of the array, which is five, I will get zero, one, two, three, four. Those are the proper indices that we need to key in to this list, to this Python list. I need i equals zero, i equals one, i equals two, three, then i equals four, then I want to stop there. I don't want I to be five because that's out of bounds, right? Cool. So that's what happens if we pass in the length of the array. But 
If you remember earlier, when I talked about the whole minus one thing, sure, I could be four. But like I mentioned earlier, since we're looking, uh, we're looking in the index one spot to the right, I would actually be looking out of bounds over here, right? If I do I plus one, which we have over here, I would get five and that's out of bounds. So I don't actually want to do that. I actually want to stay over here at three. Here, I can definitely look, definitely look to the right. So I plus one would be four. And then I can look at this number, right? And so I'm already comparing those. So even then, like there's no reason to want to move on to the next iteration right here. I don't want to go to this, this index. I don't want to go here, right? So that's sort of why we put this minus one right here. I don't want to be at this index because I'm going to go out of bounds since I'm always looking one to the right. Cool. Now that we've got that out of the way, we can actually go ahead and examine this if statement. This if statement checks, hey, if the number that I have right now, array at i, in other words, in our case, that's four, if the number I have right now is greater than the number next to me, ahead of me, one spot to the right, then you'll go inside here and do this stuff, whatever it is. But again, this if statement is just looking at this spot and one spot to the right and comparing those. Is what I have now greater than what's over there? If so, we're going to swap. This is where we actually do the swapping that is very, um, you know, that is very tied to bubble sort. This is like kind of the heart and soul of bubble sort right here is this swapping, right? And so since we notice that four is greater than two, we're going to do this swap right here. This would be, you know, something like this, right? It'd be something like this. We swap those two indices right there. So now I have this. And um, just to get out of the way, right, there's this fancy little um, syntax or whatever for swapping two elements in an array. Um, I believe, I, I still don't know exactly what the name would be. Um, something about destructuring, like array destructuring, swapping syntax or whatever, like technically this is sort of, a, this will be a tuple, right? And so Python will just kind of um, take these indexes, these indices, and then put whatever this evaluates to in that spot. So long story short, this is just a fancy way to swap elements inside of an array. Very fancy. You can do it with, you know, elements that are right next to each other, or you could do it with, you know, elements that are way out here. Doesn't matter. It just depends what you put here. This is just a fancy little way of doing it. Very nice. Very simple. So we've swapped the two and the four. Now the next line of code that's going to run is we're going to set swapped to true. This swapped variable that's up here, we set it to true. The reason we do this is because, hey, I know that I've swapped and I want to let the rest of my code know that I've swapped. And well, why do we do that? Essentially. If we think about it for a second, we need to know when the array is done being sorted so that we can finish, right? One way we can do that is by actually making another pass through the array. And if we notice that we don't swap anything, obviously the whole array is going to be sort sorted because if it wasn't sorted, I would have swapped some stuff around, right? And so at the very end, of our sorting, we will notice that we make an iteration where we didn't perform any swaps. In other words, we never actually went into the if statement for that iteration. So we would have gone through the whole array and it never hit this line that sets swapped equal to true. That's why we have if not swapped. In other words, if swapped is false, then we finally return out. We return our array that we've been modifying this whole time. So again, this swapped true is just to let the rest of the code know, 
hey, we swapped stuff, so we probably got to make another iteration, another pass through the whole array just to make sure this thing is actually sorted. That's what we're doing right here. But yeah, and so that's, that's of course, tied with... Um, um, that's tied with this uh, actual array swap right here. Once I swap, I got to let the rest of the code know that I swapped. And so we do that. Cool. So if we keep going through this line by line, we will actually go through each iteration. So I will finally uh, move to index one this time. And we just do the same check. If array at i is greater than i plus one, so if the element I have right now is greater than the, the neighbor off to the right, then I got to swap them. So we'll do that. So we'll swap these two, kind of like this. And then I'm going to set swapped equal to true, right? And I can actually, this might be best if I uh, kind of write a little variable off here. So I'll say swapped. This is kind of like a question, right? Like, did we swap? Uh, we're going to set it to true now. T for true. I have swapped. Cool. So now that the code knows that, it'll kind of remember it for later on, right? We're not going to need to use this information yet, but we will, we will later. Cool. So I moves to the next iteration after we swapped, and then we check yet again. Is this element greater than the element to the right? In this case, it is. So we'll actually swap like before, same thing. And then we'll set swapped equal to true. So swapped is already true, right? Clearly. Um, but the cool thing is we can just leave this here because, you know, it's not an expensive operation to set a variable another time. So it's fine if we just set swapped equal to whatever it was originally, right? So this is okay for us to do. This this is confirming, in other words, like, hey, I did make a swap. So, you know, set equal to true. That's fine. Cool. So now let's go to the other, excuse me, the next iteration, the last iteration. So I is at three. I'm asking yet again, is the element I have now greater than the one that is off to the right? In this case, it's not. Four is less than five, not greater than, right? Four is less than five. And so in this situation, I'm actually not going to go inside of the if statement. I'm not going to do any of that code. And then finally, our for loop is going to break because remember, I have this minus one. So I'm actually just iterating through zero, one, two, three. And I've done that. I don't want I to equal four. I want to get out before that happens. So finally, this for loop is done. We're done right here. And now we do the check. If not swapped, in other words, if swapped is false, or if we haven't made a swap at all, then you're going to return the array. But swapped is true. So we ignore this on this pass through the array. So now we go on to the next iteration, right? I'll actually go ahead and move this down and then I'll make a sort of a copy of this down here, just as a reminder that uh, this is where we came from after the first pass through the uh, array, through the list. Cool. So we have this new working area. This is the array that we're going to be making another pass through. So let's go ahead and do it. Remember, very first thing I do is I set swapped equal to false right here. And that's very important because I want swap to be false just so I know I can, I can tell since we're on a brand new pass. I can tell whether or not I made a swap during this for loop right here. It has to be set to false first. So we do that and then we'll go ahead and start iterating again. So same situation as last time. I'll kind of go a little bit faster this time since you've already seen it. But uh, is two greater than three? It's not. So we ignore the if statement and we just move on. Now is three greater than one? Yes, it is. So let's actually go ahead and swap this. 
put that there, three comes over here, and then I set swapped equal to true. Very important. True. Cool, and we'll move on, next iteration. So is three greater than four? Definitely not, right? So we'll actually leave this how it is and we won't go inside the if statement. Now is four greater than five? No, it's not, it's less than. So we'll actually skip this and now we're actually done because I won't be four because we're only iterating through zero, one, two, three thanks to this minus one. And again, just to recap, one more time. If I ended up being four, you would do this if statement and ask, hey, is five greater than what, right? There is no i plus one. So we actually get an index out of bounds, error. We can't look out of bounds over here, right? And we don't want to. So that's why we stop over here. Cool, just a very quick uh, recap. But yeah, now we're actually done with this for loop. We're done with that iteration and then we checked. Have we swapped or not? If we look, swap is true. So this if statement won't run. So we're not gonna return yet. We're gonna make another loop inside of this while true loop, right? So swapped is true, we make another iteration. Let me go ahead and make a, uh, another copy of this guy, just so we can remember what that iteration looked like. We'll bring this down here. And here is our new uh, working area right here. Cool, so again, I'm gonna set this swapped variable to false. Very beginning of this, uh, of this next loop, this next pass to the array. We'll go through this one more time since I'm, our, I'm, I'm sure you have already picked up on the idea of this, but we'll check. Is two inside of the for loop, is my two right here greater than one? Yes, it is. So let's go ahead and swap these two. If you notice, right, pretty cool. Just eyeballing it, we know that we're sorted, but the code still has to keep running because we're not exiting yet. We don't have a return, we don't have a break, whatever. We have to keep going. So the for loop moves on. We ask is two greater than three? No, nope. move on. Is three greater than four? No, move on. Is four greater than five? No, move on. We're done making that pass through the whole array. And then we ask, very interesting here. This is a very important you know, thing to understand about this. We ask if not swapped. In other words, have we swapped? And sorry, I should have actually set this to true at the very beginning whenever we swapped uh, two and one. We did swap. I forgot to change it. We just we did swap, I promise. <laughs> so we ask, did we swap? Yes, we did. That means that I, I cannot go inside of the if statement yet. I have to make another iteration inside of this while true loop. I have to make another iteration. So we'll do it again. I will uh, make another copy of this after I move this stuff, this down probably. And then this will come over here. Actually, yeah, this is good right here. Okay. So I have to start over. I'm going to set swapped equal to false. Pretty important. Swapped is gonna be false at the beginning of this pass, and now we're gonna go through. You can probably already tell that we're not ever gonna change this, the value for swapped. Because I look here, is one greater than two? No. Is two greater than three? No. Constantly, right? On every single iteration of the for loop, I realize that I don't need to swap. So I never go inside of this if statement and I never change the value of swapped. Never change the value. So that means after I get spit out from the for loop and I end up on line 10, this means that finally I have not swapped. Swapped is false still, so I have not swapped. So if not swapped, return array. 
finally, I'm going to return the array that I've been modifying the whole time. This thing, this is it. I can finally, I finally realize that like this thing is, you know, confirmed to be sorted. And this is going to be our final answer right here. This is the thing we return out of our function. And that's, that's the whole walkthrough. This is how that array of originally 42315 becomes sorted as time goes on. We constantly make these little adjustments, these little swaps between each different pass. And then eventually you can start to see stuff source, you know, stuff starts to get sorted. This one was slowly making its way over to the very beginning where it belonged, right? And stuff started moving around and shifting around how, you know, in, in the proper place that it should be, right? And that's kind of how it works. One thing that I do want to mention that is pretty important about bubble sort here, this way of doing it, is it's the fact that we're actually mutating this array. We are modifying the input array over here because I'm making these swaps inside of this array, right? So the original array gets mutated and we can actually prove that by just calling bubble sort, passing in this array, array one, and then printing the array one that supposedly was this one right here. Like it looked like this originally, but after we've modified it, it'll look different, right? We can actually prove that. So if we actually run bra.py, we can actually see that we have one, two, three, four, five. We've modified this array in place. That's the terminology for this. I, I've done this sort in place. This is an in place sorting algorithm, right? And so there it is, just to confirm that everything is working, I have one, two, three, four, five, and we can also sort this other array of, uh, I believe it's zero through nine, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And just for the sake, right? I guess we can do this uh, bigger array right here. And I'm sure you can pause it and eyeball it up if you want, just to make sure that everything is in sorted order. Here's the rest of it. But yeah, this this has been uh this has been sorted for sure due to our bubble sort in place too. That's sort of the uh, another important part about this. But yeah, that's the overview of bubble sort. Um, I guess one other thing I do want to mention really fast. Um, feel free to skip this if you want. I think it's pretty important though to be honest. Is another way to swap these different things. So. Another way you'll see it written out a lot of the times is uh, it's something like this, if I can type properly. Um, we actually reassign what is inside of the current index, so array at i, we reassign it to be something else. But I have to save it because it's gonna get overwritten, right? If we look, uh, let's just take this array for example. We'll get rid of all of this. Uh, just tuck it away somewhere over there. This is probably fine, whatever. So if I look real quick and let's say that four is temp. This is my temp number right here. And uh, even better, I'll actually say this, temp equals four off to the side. So in order to swap these, I wanna save this number in a variable first, that's temp because I'm about to override it with this guy right here, with the two. If you notice, I say array at i equals array at i plus one, just like this. It's kind of like taking two books and swapping them on a shelf, right? I have to take the one book from one position, take it out, and then like have it in my hand, and then put the other one in place of it. I have to still hold that book in my hand so that I can put it over there in the other spot, right? And so saving this value to a temp variable, this is sort of like holding it inside of our hands right here. So now that I have it in my hands, 
I'm safe because, you know, even though I've overwritten this in the array, I still have access to the four. And now here's where I say, hey, put this four in the other spot. Array at i plus one equals temp. That's where we actually put the four over here because I know what temp is. I know temp is four. So it ends up like that. And that's another way to do this array swap. It's a little bit more verbose, but um, it's definitely a piece of code that you are going to be uh, running across at some point, right? You will see this little pattern somewhere. And I mean, some people will even save it to like their own function, you can call it like swap or whatever, and then you can provide like the indices or something like that that you wanna swap, um, something like that. And they'll actually take all of this logic and put it inside of here, for instance. And then that way you can actually just call swap right here and then pass in the array and I, something like that, right? This is one way that you'll see people do it as well. Um, but I personally don't mind having this all right here. Eh, maybe I do mind, I don't know, whatever, just depends. But yeah, this is another way you can actually go about swapping two elements inside of an array. I really, really, really recommend looking over and really knowing how this code works. This is very fundamental code, if you're not familiar with it already. But uh, yes, this is kind of a walkthrough of bubble sort. Hello, uh, it's Nick from the future. I uh, realized during editing that I didn't actually uh, bring up the second way of writing a uh, bubble sort. So I figured I'd come back on here and like talk about it because I mentioned that I was going to talk about it, but then I didn't. So now we're here. Um, the other way that I, you know, that I also see this written is something like this. We, we modify our while loop a little bit um, to actually utilize our swapped variable that we have right here. So it actually looks something like this, all swapped. And how, how we can also change this is by getting rid of that, that exit condition. Because this, if not swapped condition, that is essentially, well, first of all, it's essentially the same thing as this, sort of, but it's, it's, this is how we know, how the code knows that we need to exit our while loop. But if you think about it, right, while loops, I mean, this thing right here, this is the condition. This is a condition that helps you get out. Like whenever this condition ends up being false, you exit the while loop. That's just how while loops work. So why not just get rid of this? And then we have something more like this, right? And the only other thing we need to do is return our array over here. That's it. And even then, you don't technically even need to return your array since everything is being modified in place, which we talked about earlier. So we can just write it like this, right? And just to prove that it works before we talk about it a little bit more, uh, we're gonna run this code. Run that, everything is good, right? I have this original array. This is my sorted output, same thing here, over there. And I guess if you want to see the third array or whatever, why not? We'll go ahead and print that out as well. Just like this, right? Everything is sorted. So sort of to talk about the, um, I guess the, the nitty gritty details of how this works. Um, if we imagine that we have just made a pass, the very last pass, through an array, and so like, let's say that given this array, we actually ended up with one, two, three, four, five. If you remember from earlier, we actually needed to make one more pass across this array to see if we would make any swaps. So the same situation arises where you never go inside of this if statement, and then you keep going, you exit the for loop. You exit the for loop, and then instead of running into the uh, if condition we had down here, if not swapped, you actually just go back up to the beginning of the while loop condition, the same thing that happens on every iteration, and you notice that swapped is false. That's when you break from the while loop and that's when you return your sorted array. So 
maybe about the differences. We'll talk about the differences. Um, I personally, like, I think this looks kind of not hacky, but it looks a little bit, looks a little bit smelly, right? Like, it's kind of odd that we have to set this value to something that we don't actually want it to be at the very beginning, um, just to sort of, you know, allow us to get into the while loop. That's why this is here, right? I want it to be true so that I can actually, so that I can actually enter this while loop. That's why I set it to true first. Because if it was false, of course, we would just skip over the while completely and nothing would happen to our array, excuse me. So nothing would happen. But if I, if I set it to true, I can actually enter this while loop. But right after that, of course, that's when I want to reset it to false. And of course, this just happens on every single iteration after that. It always gets reset to false. So a little bit weird, right? And like we saw earlier, right? Not, not even totally necessary. We can actually just have that, uh, that if... What was it? If not swapped over here, and everything would be fine. And then we just have this uh, while true here. Both are totally, you know, acceptable. Both are completely legitimate. Both work, obviously. Um, I think it's just a matter of preference, whether you want to write it this way or that way. Who knows? But now you know uh, both ways of doing it. Okay, that's, a, that's enough from a future, Nick. And so I guess now we can talk about conceptually um, different questions like why would I want to learn this if it's inefficient you know why might it be inefficient we talked about that a little bit earlier right um, different stuff like that in my opinion um, a good reason why you might want to learn bubble sort is because it's very very fundamental like for beginners people that are just starting out learning how to code or even some more intermediate people like this is knowledge that you know, all of this code should make sense if you're at an intermediate level already. Should make immediate sense. Because the thing is, the thing, the, the reason this is so important is because it teaches you how to like move, move stuff around in, inside of an array. It teaches you how to swap stuff around, what it looks like, and you know, of course, this little bit right here that I think is really important, right? These are all very fundamental concepts that you kind of got to get a grasp on. And also it's a very, it's a very like, it, it's a big staple of like the O of N squared, you know, time complexity category or class. Because the thing is, right, you have to understand that you're going to potentially, at the worst case, you're going to be making multiple passes through your array. At worst case, it's going to be N. So that means I'm doing potentially n amount of work, n times, n times n, so n squared, right? That's why it's in the uh, O of n squared time complexity class. I have to do n things, in other words, I have to iterate through my whole array, potentially n amount of times. And so that's, again, why it's an inefficient um, sorting algorithm. We have more efficient algorithms like merge sort and quick sort, right? Which you might be familiar with. Those are the more, you know, mod not modern, but those are the algorithms that are actually used under the hood in a lot of programming languages. But um, that's maybe another reason why you wouldn't want to actually use bubble sort. I highly recommend learning it and knowing about it. Also, in case you get asked it inside of like a junior level like um, interview, right? In case you get asked about this during an interview, you'll know what it is. But also, you'll have learned those concepts, hopefully, um, to heart. You'll, you'll, you'll know this stuff by heart and know how every little intricacy of this works. That's sort of why I think um, you should learn about bubble sort. Um, but yeah, now you know. Now you know, either way. Um, yeah, this was a full walkthrough of Bubble Sort. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.